You guys ready? No. I have no idea. What do you want to talk about? Okay, well, I have this list of movies that you saw well, this I saw week. The Avengers. So. I'm talking about comic book movies if you want to. Did you both sure. see The Avengers? I mean, we've both seen The Avengers. That's a good starting off point, at least. It's good. It definitely is a, 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 an event. An event. This was not a movie. This was an event. An event. We should probably introduce this for you. Ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> you should okay, I should clear my throat. You hmm? should say which episode. This is episode oh, this is three. So, yeah, this is episode... Oh, volume two. Volume two. Season. Episode three. It's too confusing. Okay, so coming to you from the Cinema Lounge... How's that confusing? It's two things. Coming to you from the Cinema Lounge of the volume, Carolina... Whatever Ash- you want to set it. Second yes. iteration... Second cycle, is that what? No, that sounds like you're washing something. Coming to you from the Cinema Lounge of the Carolina Asheville in our second series, second season, third episode. It's the latest like bastards go to the movies. Of doing them isn't as longer than a season. I feel like that's coming to you direct from Purgatory. We're trying to get a, an opening announcement for this thing. Yeah, it's perfect. I, I love it. So we're on episode three of the new. New the version. brand new, all new elitist bastards go to the movies. Same old bastards, more elitist. If you can even imagine it. So I think I'm less elitist than Ken's getting grouchier. Well, that could be. That could I be. Think he's worn me down. I don't care anymore. <laughs> you didn't care to begin with. You just pretended to. So all that needs to happen is you just need to join well, Mark McCloud and now. become totally populist, and you'll be set. That's right. Oh, you can become. A, you could become a fanboy. Ooh. And speaking of fanboys, you guys wanted today to talk about the Avengers movie since you've both seen it and it's on well, it's hot one on everybody's thing we mind. Might talk about, I guess. You definitely want to talk about. I heard you say I really want to talk about the Avengers movie because I, I love it quite no. phrased that way. I saw it. I'm going to see it tonight. That's my plan. Okay. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Um, and I know. Well, one thing I've, I've read your review, Ken. Yeah. And we'll probably get into spoilers here. So if you, so if you, if you, you know, if you, if you really give a shit about being spoiled by a superhero comic book movie, which you're pretty much going to know what's going to happen anyway. They lose and then they all die. Yeah, you know, right. So it's a big artistic statement by Joss Whedon. He's like, there is no superhero. There's no. You can be as super as you want, but you really can't. No one escapes their fate. Alan Page gets shot in the head. Wrong movie. <laughs> but a better movie. But it sounds like you. I don't know. I might. We could talk about how I might disagree with that. But you might disagree that Super isn't as good as the Avengers. Super creeps me out. Well, that's and why not it's a better way, movie. And not in the way it's supposed to. I don't think it makes me really uncomfortable. Really. And not in the intended ways. And then the ending of it, where you're supposed to feel it's supposed to be sort of uplifting, is not for me because I'm still like that guy is crazy as shit, and nobody's gonna help him. He's just gonna be crazy forever. So that's I me. I, well, I didn't feel like I was being uplifted, so. Okay. No, I, I just. Thought I think you're was, supposed to, and I was I like. I don't know. I no, know this guy is crazier than a shit house rat. This is not sweet the girl at all. Was even crazier than him. Yeah. Yeah. So. But she seems to get her head on straight. Mm, so to he, speak. He doesn't. Yeah, so no. anyway. Yes. Anyway, let's let's. You, well, you you've read my review, and I, I I'm assuming you're going to argue some point. Well, you didn't seem to like the climax, right? Did you see Transformers 3? I did, but no, here's another thing. More than that, it's Independence Day. I have managed to never see all of Independence Day. You've seen Day. Independence Day, Steve. Yeah. The climax, the final, like, you'll know it when you see it, what okay. I'm talking about. I mean, it, it's exa- it has the, in a lot of ways, the Independence Day ending. Oh, I mean, right down to the heroic speech and, and all that good no, stuff? No, no, no. Okay. Um, am I going to ruin it for you if I tell you? You're not going to ruin it for me. It's a comic book. Fire I don't does not appear. You can cut this out because it really, it's not going to matter to the rest of the, mo- the the podcast. But Iron Man takes a nuclear missile mm-hmm. and then flies it into the, the, the spaceship that's out in space. It's even got, like, the light coming down. And it's even, if you think about it, it's like, oh, the alcoholic guy... Mm-hmm. Saving the world by flying into this hole and blowing everything up, but he lives. Right. So it's like it's it's Independence Day. Hmm. 
that sounds about right. I mean, yeah. there's only so much, the thing is, there's only so much you can do with that kind of setup. This is true. I mean, that, but that it is looks exactly like it. <laughs> like it's over. I don't know. I mean, and, and now, now the the the, 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 the Transformers thing could be coincidental because Transformers is only a year old. Right. This thing could have been at a stage of production where it was. This was already in a fait accompli by then. Right. If it's got echoes of Independence Day, no. Right. Well, it's the classic, like, Roland Emmerich blow something up in space ending. Um, but my thing with the... I felt like there was finally one of these Marvel movies that had a satisfying climax. I know it's... I'm sort of over the whole alien invasion thing. That was kind of dumb. But as far as, like, scope and actually having a climax... Yeah, because that's the big problem with the first Iron Man. I didn't even like the second Iron Man's climax. I know it was better than the first one, but it still was not that. Mickey Rourke just shows up and dies. Like that's pretty much how it ends. And they stand in back to back and shoot stuff. Like nothing happens, really. I mean, compared to the first one, yeah, it's better. But do we have War Machine in the New Avengers? Or no, the he's Aven- not in it. Which is okay. I didn't even think about that till now. I guess he's. I don't care about him. I, don't know well, I mean, War Machine isn't. I, I, he's probably been an Avenger at some point, but he's not key to the. At least I know, in the continent. I think they get to use him, logically. Like if they, they're trying to get people in. It's superheroes. already got too many people in it. No, I know, but I'm saying logically, you would think. And there's no Ant Man, from what I hear. So that's heartbreaking. There's no what? Ant Man. No, but Edgar Wright's trying to make an Ant Man movie. He has been for years, so we'll see. Maybe by the next time he <laughs> get a movie out of that character. I really don't. <laughs> Why you'd well, bother? It's sort of Edgar Wright. I think he's got. I mean, the script's apparently done. He's a wonderfully fa- flawed character. I mean, yeah. but I mean, he's actually probably one of the more interesting of the Marvel heroes. Well, Edgar Wright and heroes. Joe Cornish have apparently written Joe Cornish, who made Attack the Block, have apparently written a script for this movie, huh. and it's been sitting around for a while. But it's not like you said. It's not a big character, so. Right. But now that the Avengers have made all this money, they might be willing to roll the dice on. I mean, that one's, it's going to flop. Even no matter how well written it is, it's Ant-Man. I mean, like, I, I, I'm even moderately interested to see what that team could do. It kind of be, it might depend on who stars. I don't, I mean, it's, there's no way that it's not, I mean, because people are going to be going to that expecting a parody because of the name. I mean, like, and. I don't know, it might be fun. Like, it could you be. Know, well, you know, it has to be made first, I think. Yeah. Nobody, I don't think they've. Said for sure. Because he, the character's crazy. Hank Pym goes crazy, and he has. I mean, in, in a lot of the comics continuity, he's done a lot of terrible things. He's an interesting character. He's like sort of like the bad guy Avenger almost in a way. Okay. So, okay. I, you boys are off on an entirely different Lee. You know, I, I you're, so. you're, you've left me behind. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck Ant Man is, and I don't care. Well, Steve's gonna get all giddy when he sees who's in the end credits, probably, or at least he'll know who it is. I'll tell you who. Okay. Somebody. You can tell me later because okay. was it after? Yeah. No, not the before the that thing that 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 turns and says something. Yeah. I know who that was. Turns and says something. He doesn't say anything. He smiles. Is it watch the watcher? No. Uh, it's a shame because I would love that. No, it's not unfortunately. But anyway, I didn't have. I felt like there was this. It was. Yeah, it's. The climax is like a lot of movies, but there is one. That may be. Which I mean, is, I, I don't remember that, that Thor had a bad climax, but I don't remember what it was. I never saw Thor. And Captain America, I don't really remember. Well, Captain like, America is so damn boring that I am not interested in seeing. I didn't like him in this. I wouldn't have liked a whole movie about him. That's for damn sure. Right. So, tell me about the Whedon factor, because that to me is one of those things that could have made or break made or broken the movie well, it works say. for this yeah and I ensemble think it's, cast kind of thing he knows how to yes. play everybody just well, it's enough. also that and he actually like likes the characters which is more than I can say about anything that happened in Cabin in the Woods oh, God, which I don't yes. think he can't, gives a shit about it horror works. movies yeah. but he gives a, sh- a big shit about comic books which is why it works and it's not like a great movie by any means oh, but God, it's no, fun no, for what it is no. and as far as like comic book movies go it's just a pure comic book movie no it's not grim it's not it doesn't post-modern. take itself too important no, no. You know, it, it, it doesn't have that that you know it's not going to have that Christopher Nolan this is the equal of King Lear vibe to it no and I mean it's really impressive that you can get 
a scene with Robert Downey Jr. and Mark Ruffalo talking in like pseudoscience and they both are selling it and doing it with a straight face. Like, so everybody's on board for Speaking it. Speaking of which, can you imagine just how much less appealing this movie would be with Edward Norton as the Hulk? Well, that's why they didn't get him, yeah. I think. Because so if you remember, they didn't, Ed Norton wanted to be in it and they were like, no, we want somebody that gets along with an ensemble cast and doesn't want to take over and, the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even Sean Bean was better than him. I actually like Ang Lee's Hulk. I mean, that's not an issue it here. It wasn't but Sean Bean. It was uh, Eric, Eric Bana. Eric, Eric Bana. They're the same person. <laughs> well, one of one dies in every movie. And yeah. I think that's... So do you feel like it was worth the buildup of, I mean, because we've got, you know, Hulk, the two Iron Man movies, the Thor movie. Yes, uh, I will say that because I didn't think it would be. And part of my problem with Captain America and looking back on the Iron Man movies is they're not their own movies. They're... Their ads for this thing that doesn't even exist. But at the same time, they made a buttload of money. Yeah, yeah. And we're slated for more of them. Yeah, of course. Well, Mark Ruffalo signed on for nine movies as the whole. Nine just, Avengers or nine Hawks? Nine, being in nine movies as. Okay. So I guess it could be guest star. Yeah, because there's a, we've got a rope uh, 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 an Iron Man 3 coming up. Right. We've got a Captain America 2. I'm sure I don't make know if there's a Hulk Thor, movie. but I imagine there I think, is. Yeah, they're making another Thor movie. <coughs> um, and of course, I think at this point they will make another Hulk because they finally figure out how to make... Yeah, you get somebody likable in the lead. Yeah. That really helps. So, we're pretty much stuck with them, but I feel like now, hopefully... Hopefully they'll make self-contained movies. We're stuck with them until point. somebody gets tired of them. Right. But hopefully they'll learn that hey, we can make self-contained movies in our Avengers will be fine by itself. We don't have to make movies for another movie. Hopefully. Well, <laughs> we'll see. There is another mass of superheroes to contend with that could be turned into this sort of thing, isn't there? You mean the DC characters? Uh -huh. Well, that's what I, I mean. There's been talk about doing a Justice League, which is, of course, the same idea. Yeah, but they need to build up to it, don't they? Well, they but they, what are they going to like? Martian Manhunter? Yeah, I mean, like, like you, when like Wonder Woman, they still haven't been able to get a Wonder Woman movie. I, I, they had that TV show. It was terrible. Yeah, like, it got canceled after an episode, wasn't it? Oh no, they I had one on TV. Right. Or, I, I don't know, that. but yeah, yeah, it was apparently really, really bad. Well, it's tough to do those. Those characters are a lot harder I think, to pull off credibly than the Marvel characters. Marvel well, characters are all set kind of in the real world-ish. DC is a little earlier, a little less. I don't know. They're a lot bigger. Those characters. Right. It's hard to encapsulate Superman, and you know, as with Batman, like especially after they've made all these yeah really serious Batman movies, and then you're gonna have this guy flying well, somebody around. Somebody is going to yeah. end up having to go back to something less serious than these Christopher Nolan angst fests. Right. So are there any other major summer blockbuster? Because one of the things that's been talked about a little bit, at least online, is how you know this is sort of the first big blockbuster of the you know the warm months. Well, you Hunger know. Games is huge, but now I don't think anybody even thinks about that movie anymore. Well, they won't until the next one, and then they'll be all jazzed about it and gaga. And well, the movie just wasn't very good. No, it was adequate. Yeah, but but as far as summer stuff, mm -hmm. I'm curious about Prometheus. The more I think about it, the more <laughs> the bigger the more I feel like the, the ad campaign is going to be leaps better than the movie is, just because Ridley Scott hasn't made anything I've liked in decades. I didn't like Gladiator. It's got a good cast. I like Hannibal, like, okay. He's made some okay stuff, okay, but nothing so, yeah, that's supposed no. to be like. You didn't sit through the romantic the comedy, yeah, yeah, did you? Say, no. Uh huh. What was it? What was it called? Oh, something. We, there's some like period of time in it. A good year. Is that it? A good year, yeah. With Russell Crowe as a romantic lead. And uh, the height of humor was make Russell Crowe drive a smart car. <laughs> that's just so funny. I'm not surprised. I have no idea what you're talking about. It sounds awful. It though. came and left real quick. He falls in a pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An yeah. empty pool. There's a bunch of flashbacks. Who was it? Albert Finney? I don't, I 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's I really, vaguely remember the trailer. I remember Ken hating it. So, it's grim. It's grim. We also have uh, Men in Black Three. That's gonna be shitty. Jesus. You're not excited about it? No. No. Uh, somebody needs to sit Josh Brolin down and explain to him that he has a career. He hasn't been in these other two movies, and there's absolutely no reason for him to be in this one. So he can get out now before his career. There's is no over. reason for him to be in this. Tommy Lee Jones is just old; like he doesn't know what he's doing. Will Smith is basically washed up at this point. Yeah, seven pounds pretty much did him in, I think. Hmm. So what about Which the? Is uh, hardly surprising if you ever saw Seven Pounds. I never saw it. I, <laughs> now that really? was funny. <laughs> Kills himself with a jellyfish. Yes. What? Commits suicide, yes, suicide by suicide jellyfish. with a jellyfish. Why? What, out of all the ways you could commit suicide, why would? So that he, it won't damage the goods, and his eyes can be given to this woman. Why doesn't he just give up his eyes? Don't. I don't understand. Don't, don't, don't. Or just like give up like one eye. Of this. Then he could. Ha- then she could at least see out of one. Then she'd have an eye patch. She looked like Samuel L. Jackson in The Adventures. Huh. Well, what about the relaunch or the reboot or the re-whatever of the uh, Born series, Born Legacy? I believe is what it's called, right? No, it's a full-on sequel, I believe. But it doesn't have Matt Damon in it, though. No, right? but there's another. I don't know. I like the the Born films a good bit, but I like them fine. They're the, they're the sort of thing though that I will never watch twice, and I won't. I do not have copy. Do you have copies of them? Two of them. Oh well, you see, you're up on me. Yeah, but I don't watch much. Every so often, I'm like, I should watch those. I enjoy those movies. Is it the same thing as watching them? No. Ah. Uh-huh. That's like that copy of Road to Perdition I'm going to get off the shelf one of these years. I mean, I'm sure it'll be good. Maybe. I don't know. But it, I don't excited? know if I care at this point. Yeah. So is there anything coming out in the next few months that you're excited by? Moonrise Kingdom. <laughs> yeah. What's that? The new West Anderson. Anderson. Uh, okay. Um... I mean, I'm really interested in, in Dark Shadows on Friday. I really am. Yeah, you know, I, I was skeptical about it. I saw the trailer finally. Got around to seeing it. And it looks like it could be funny. Now, I mean, is, does, is this movie going to gain points with you because Alice Cooper's in it? Or are you even aware that well, he's Alice in it? Cooper's gone crazy as far as. Okay. He's gone crazy. Well, it's a, it's you know, he's gone crazy. Be, he's gone crazy politically, so I, I, he's kind of on the outs with me. Well, it should but be 70s brought, but, Alice but he Cooper. He brought Pat Boone down with him. That's what I love about it, is that he went, he went off, you know, he's, gone, he's definitely gone crazy politically, but, like, he took Pat Boone and, like, made him question his own, like, religion. He's like, I, I had no idea that people were treating people this bad just for wearing leather. I don't know if you remember that, when Pat Boone released his heavy metal album. I and remember he was, Pat Boone releasing his heavy metal album. And then he was kicked out of the Christian Awards show that he started because people were like, they didn't get the joke. You know? I, I mean, the fact that it made someone like Pat Boone question his own morality and, and actually see some hypocrisy in his own work, I love that. Alice Cooper can, he, if that's the only reason he was on this planet, I'm fine with that. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I, mean I, I have a great deal of respect for Alice Cooper over the course of three albums, but, you know... <laughs> well, no, what I'm saying is, since this movie three. takes place, since this movie takes place in the 70s, and so it should be... It's got him singing a song off of Billion Dollar Babies, yeah. So Which makes be, sense. Right. So it should be less crazy Alice yeah, Cooper. Yeah. In Ex- theory. Except it, it, the difference is, is that he's not going to look like he did in no. 1972. I'm sorry. Put enough makeup on him, maybe. Yeah, no. It's <laughs> not going to. Yeah, there's a really good chance he'll actually look better. I think we should consider that. That's possible, but I doubt it. Yes, as somebody who likes Mars Attacks, I will probably enjoy Dark Shadows. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to hear, though, that it's a little more serious than it looks like in the trailer, so it's hard to say. Hmm. Of course, the early reviews are, are mostly blistering, but they're all from Australia, and I haven't found an Australian critic yet that I thought was reliable. I've asked Jeremy, and he can't come up with one. Hmm. Yahtzee is the only one I can think of. He reviews video games. No, no they're all, you know. little zero, no, zero no. punctuation there for you. Well, these these people have all been kicked on the head by kangaroos. So, well, he's also British, Yahtzee. He just happens to live in Australia, so yeah. that has something to do with it too. I mean, I'll watch Batman. 
Yeah, that's, well, I mean, that's a resounding endorsement. If yeah, I've yeah heard that's one. an endorsement. Yeah, that's about where I am. Well, I'm kind of curious as to how he's going to end it. Because, I mean, all, I mean oh, he's going to kill Batman. Big whoop. Well, maybe. Or maybe he's going to cripple him. I don't think he's going to do either. You think he's just going to be like, eh, Batman got tired and left. From what I can tell from the trailer, Batman gets kidnapped by Bane and thrown in a hole. And then he comes back to Gotham City and beats everyone. I don't <laughs> think they're going to kill him off. Oh, He'll just, it'll do, it'll end like the other ones where he's riding off into the sunset or whatever. But they just won't make another one with Christopher Nolan. So. How did Batman and Robin end? I, I've never watched it, so I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen that garbage. Are you kidding me? Uh, there's no way I'd see that. Yeah. I don't think they plan on that being the end. Well, that may well be. You know what's going to suck, though? Hmm. That Spider-Man movie. Oh, God, yes. I don't know. It looks horrible. It, oh, did you see Sam Raimi's Spider-Man? Well... This looks worse. This looks... Like we've got a... Again, it's just angst. Like, we don't have... Why are you making a serious As long as they get movie? the angst right. My biggest problem with Raimi's Spider-Man was that... He's got daddy issues now. Don't you know that they've changed his origin? To what? His parents being his scientists? Parents apparently genetically altered him. So when he got bit by the spider, that's when his powers activated. It wasn't okay. because he got... And so now he's got to, like, deal with his daddy issues. Again, that's... Uh, it doesn't really bother me so much. I mean... Well, I don't care that he changed his origin. I don't give a shit about him and his family. Like... Oh, his stupid aunt with her free toaster. Uh, is, in the, is there a free toaster? Yeah, it's something. Uh, some gag in the, in the second movie. Oh, yeah, I didn't like those movies. I didn't... I thought the first one was fine for what it was. The it's second one was not bad, but I, it was kind of ruined for me because people went to see it before I did right. and came out of it telling me that it was just the greatest thing they'd ever seen. And I'm watching it going, this? This is the greatest thing you've ever seen? What's wrong with you people? And you should see more movies. Yeah. A lot of them. Any of them, actually. I watched the trailer for the first one because I just wanted to. And it's strange how far trailers have come in 10 years. Like. Oh, I'm sure, yeah pretty impressive hmm. I should see that so while we're on the subject what is the I mean do we have a, a consensus about the best ever superhero genre movie well we would say the spirit yeah, but yeah the spirit you can say well, the spirit. make the case for the spirit I mean I, well, I've never seen it so I mean and, I mean I'm familiar obviously with the comics nobody but Ken and I like it pretty uh, much yeah now Jeremy likes it okay that's three people yeah now Brian likes it were you familiar with Will Eisner's works no, before you saw no. the films? No. What's that? Were you familiar with Eisner's works before no. you saw it? I don't care. Well, no, I mean, because Eisner has the same place in, in comics history in a, lot, in a lot of ways. Like, people really respect his abilities, as a, especially as an artist. And to a certain extent, I mean, you know, he, was, he was a theoretician in, in sequential art. But none of his work really has gone on to be... I mean, the spirit's not one of the iconic characters for most Dude, people. My films. God, you would think that... Frank Miller had buggered Santa Claus. Well, he was also friends with Eisner. I know. And, and so I figure that he knew that Eisner would have been okay with what he made. Pro almost certainly. I mean, I, I can't imagine but he would God, the, the, the comic book fans didn't buy that. Huh. Well, the problem was they put it out at Christmas, which was... Really dumb. Yeah. Um, and it really needed... What it needed to sell it mm -hmm. was a poster featuring Samuel L. Jackson dressed as a Nazi. And this does indeed happen in the course of the film. Hmm. I think it's a great movie. Um, I also think Frank Miller's also crazy as shit. Oh, yeah. So that seems to be a theme we have going. Um, I think he's pretty much gone off the deep end. So do we have anything else to say about comic book movies or big summer blockbusters coming up? Well, we were making a case for the spirit. Sure. But... Um, if you want an answer to that and a more accessible to the comic book fan level, sure. For me, it's a tie between Batman Returns and X Men Two. As far as the best films, as the far best as the best films, films, yes, the best comic book films, yes. What do you think, Justin? I don't know. It's strange because there's so much different criteria. Like I think you could make an argument for the <laughs> Avengers because. It's a really good approximation of how cheesy comic books are, but yet 
taking itself serious enough to where it's just entertainment. Do so you think it might have um, actually found that kind of right level of where, like, cinema, that, the cinema so, equivalent of a comic book? But at the same time, it's, there's no subtext to it. There's nothing greater going on. Well, I would argue that there's at least one piece of subtext to it. Which is? Clark Gregg's man-boy oh. crush on... Yeah, but it's not the point of the movie. No, it's not the point of the movie. Like X-Men 2 is. It's not the point of the movie, but really, I think it is the cleverest dig at the fanboy culture I have ever seen. Because 99% of them will not even understand that they've been had. Right. Hmm. Unless they listen to this, and they don't listen to us. But I also feel like something like The Avengers, which is such a big event, sort of event film, you kind of have to give it time to see right. where it settles. Well, you know, it's, it's like, <clears throat> I don't care how good it is. I won't put anything on a best of other than best of the year list, which is a knee-jerk thing. I mean, it's considering you know, one of the great films. It's got to be 20 years old. I'm not going out on a limb for anything that hasn't really had some test of time to it. I might... 10, maybe, but 20 I'm more comfortable with. And so at this point, I mean, the only thing that would really qualify from from that perspective would be something like either the Donner Superman or the uh, Burton Batman films. Yeah, the Burton Batman is the is 20 years old. This one, yeah. So How do you think that holds up? Because I saw it a couple of years ago, and I, I really didn't like it. I think Especially it holds after up. seeing the Nolan films. I, I, well, you see, I hate the Nolan films. I mean, I, 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 I tried to respect them when they were first came out. And no, I don't like them at all. I think they're drab and gloomy. And, um, you know, one of my favorite things is, and I can't stand Christian Bale's Batman. And I, you know, I, I will cherish listening to Ken Russell run down everything that he thought was wrong with that movie and conclude by saying, and that Batman, ick. To me, that's just like, that just said it all for me. Well, I recently watched, I watched the beginning of Burton's Batman, and it was, to me, seemed more like a comic book than a lot of comic book movies have. You mean in terms of visual style? Yes. That and just the tone of it, like, it's silly at points, but it doesn't, it does it with a straight face, which comic books are, like. Mm-hmm. I mean, you take the Avengers, which is all these people set in the real world, and then a couple of magical Scandinavian gods, like, how, and then some aliens show up. Like, how does that work? Like, you just kind of have to like not pay attention to it. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, don't ask questions. You know. No, no. no. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, the, well, the mere same fact thing with these well, the very serious that, Nolan Batman movies, but it's still a guy dressed as a bat, like. But there's nothing there's solving problem, solving large cultural problems by punching. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's yeah. look at it this way, though. Well, I have a Batman question for you. Once King gets there, is okay. nothing you can do that isn't going to make Loki's hat ridiculous. You mean less ridiculous? Or I mean, it, well, yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah. It, it, you well, cannot it's not remove it all the time. It sort I know, of which is probably in its favor because it, that is the most it's absurd. Ridiculous in the comics I never got. Too. I, mean, I didn't like him as a villain because I could never take him seriously. Loki or Loki. He's just sort of like, you, you never get a sense that he's actually going to, like, do anything bad. Right. He's also a, a gothy Michael Fassbender. Which, if you watch it, okay. <laughs> tell me if I'm right. Or you, see, like, you, you see, what he struck me as was a, a greasy-haired Richard E. Grant. Wow. Because he's already got a little bit of that problem as is. Huh. Yeah, but, but, but Loki's hair is longer. <laughs> okay, so you want to wrap this or do you want to ask no, me a question? I have a Batman question. Okay. Maybe help me. Yeah. How can... Is there like a nice part of Gotham City? You know, that is a big question. You mean like, is there a part that's not like shitty like, and run down? Who and who would want to live in this city that has all these psychotics that keep breaking out of mm-hmm. this asylum that's across the street? Well, it's summed up in the first... Burton film, decent people shouldn't live here. They'd be happier somewhere else. But even at this point, like, if right. you take all of the Batman, like, 
all of it. Like, right. Why would anybody live, like, there's a giant crocodile man living in the sewer. Why would you live in the city? Like, Well, I think the idea is pretty similar to, you know, the late 80s New York, kind of, where it was just like there was a terrible crime epidemic happening. Nobody, you know, why, why did people live in New York? Because they did. I mean, I, I, but I don't know if there's... I, I can't think off the top of my head if there's just a nice, you happy see, New York is always painted much more grim than the reality. Well, sure, but I think I mean I think that's what we're talking about here is the, the sort of uh, because it's, it's it's Gotham and it's I mean the, implied by the name. But, but I don't know Gotham, if there's, does the sun ever shine in Gotham City? Well, there's the pretty downtown where all the money is, in in Gotham where it's all like big buildings and fancy, and then you got everything else. So in the TV show, that's where they were always. Penguin was robbing big banks and stuff. There sure are a lot of abandoned warehouses in Gotham, That's I'll true. say that. Well, because there's no economy. What's the economy going to be? <laughs> Nobody's going to want to bring business there. Well, that's, that's, a big, that's criticism of superheroes, especially Marvel superheroes in general. It's like they're all based in New York. Right. And New York is almost always getting leveled by something. Like, who would live in New York? See, what I think well, they yeah, should... That, that, that's that's kind of like the... That's like the... Uh, uh, Tokyo. Right. And the giant monsters just leveled on a constant basis. Mm -hmm. And why not? Well, it's fun. We love, I, mean, I think as a culture, we're, you know, it's a cathartic thing for us to see these gigantic <laughs> structures and these things in our lives destroyed. You know, like there's a sense of freedom and a sense of like, who hasn't had kind of rage at, you know, something like that? You know, like who doesn't have that sort of like, this, cause it's a symbol for, for society and the restraints of society. And then these gigantic forces of nature come and knock them all down. And, you know, I, I mean, I get that. I'm, I'm cool with it in I many want, respects. I want a Batman story where Bruce Wayne... After I see the results of the election tonight, on the, uh, I'll <laughs> probably be all ready for that. We'll build I, you a little Lego city. I want to see a Batman story where Bruce Wayne loses all his money in a Ponzi scheme. Because I just assume, like, white-collar crime runs rampant mm -hmm. in Gotham City. Because Batman doesn't care. Like, he's just beating up people. <laughs> God damn it, Alfred. How did you let this happen? Yeah. He's okay. just punching crazy people. That's all he does. Just punches well, he's crazy the mentally himself. ill. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> Batman punching crazy people since 1933 or whenever it was. He 39. Had. I think I, it is. I don't know. I think, I think it was 39. Well, you know. All that? right, we got to wrap it because Cosmo showed. So. Cosmo has showed up, so that means we have to go. Cosmo, you tell we tell listeners goodbye. Good night, everybody. All right, thanks for listening to Elite Bastard. I feel you looking through me I can feel your stare I know what you want to do to me I can see the signs